The temperature in Austin was 101 degrees that August day. From his perch at the observation deck of the University of Texas Tower, Charles Whitman was spraying bullets like rain. Ambulance now go screaming by. Apparently they're going to try to get those who are injured if there's still any who've been pinned down. Students and faculty ran, dodged and ducked, trying to get to safety. Many could not. Now, for the first time in 40 years, five of the seven Austin police officers who made it to the top floors of the tower to confront Charles Whitman come together to talk about what happened and lead us along their dangerous path. One officer, George Shepard, died before this reunion. The other, Officer Ramiro Martinez, has been the most interviewed of the seven and was not present. He had a gun at every hole up there. there four holes. Oh, those those three that you yeah, see right yeah, there? And yeah. then I guess they wrap all the way around. There's three, yeah, on, all, three on, on each side. side. Drainage spouts at the base of the deck became perfect gun ports, protecting Whitman from gunfire below. To shoot through one of those <laughs> gaps is impossible, but when you get up there and you look, you'll see that his field of fire is just complete. This whole area here is just wide open. Aiming through the drain spouts, Whitman was shooting at people hiding behind stonework near the statue of Jefferson Davis on the south plaza of the tower. One of them was Officer Billy Speed, the only Austin policeman to die in the battle. And here is another, another one right here. The granite rail and post still bear the bullet scars. But when, when this hit, we feel like Billy got some splatter of the granite, and he backed up. And then we feel like out of the spray that he was hit right here. You were standing beside the policeman when he was shot? Yes. Officers arrived on the scene from all over the city. Pretty much every man with a badge and a gun was there. There was no plan. I mean, it was flying by the seat of your pants. There was absolutely no plan. There was no such thing as a SWAT team. The officers that came out here was carrying pistols mostly, or any rifles they could have picked up at home. There is a sniper on the University Tower firing at will. We couldn't count them, but there were shots coming from everywhere, everywhere. He had his stage of rifles in position. He just run around to shoot them, and it looked like a gang of people up there. Most of the officers in our story were away from the tower, and they were all trying to figure out how do we get inside. They knew running across the mall here would be suicide. And that's when they were approached by someone they came to call the Tunnel Man. There was an engineer here, and he said, you know, we can get you up there through the tunnels right to the UT uh, building and the elevators. Did this Tunnel Man lead you? He took the lead, and we followed. And this is the underground path these officers took to get inside the tower. Not many people know about these tunnels beneath campus, and fewer have seen them. They contain huge pipes carrying steam and cold water, regulating the temperatures inside the buildings above. I don't remember this well. The University of Texas has never allowed news cameras inside this maze of tunnels until now. Sensors and alarms are used to keep them secure today. Forty years ago, it turned out to be a secure path for the officers wanting to get inside the tower. This was the first time they had traveled through the tunnel since that fateful day. Whew, it was hot back there in that hole. The tunnel man had a key okay. for every lock, gate, and door between the officers and the end of the standoff. After many minutes inside the tunnel, they finally arrived to the bottom of the tower. Once to the elevator, the officers didn't know what was waiting for them at the top of the tower. There was a woman here, and then a, a boy laying on top of her, and the woman asked me to get her who's on top of her off of her. And that boy raised up and told me to give, me, give him my shotgun. He wanted to go kill me. And I said, we'll take care of that for you. It's like a battle scene. It's like, there's another shot, and another shot. There are two different kinds of shots. Apparently, police are returning the fire now. Austin police officer Jerry Day was one of the first inside the UT Tower after Charles Whitman started his shooting rampage. Miraculously, he made it in on foot. Day, Officer Ramiro Martinez, and W.A. Cowan from the DPS were the only lawmen to do so. We're moving, moving pretty good to get through here. More than 27 stories below, in the tunnels that crisscross the UT campus, five other APD officers, Houston McCoy, Philip Connor, Milton Showquist, Harold Moe, and George Shepard, now deceased, 
were following UT engineer William Wilcox, a man they've come to call the Tunnel Man, who promised to lead them through the tunnels to the elevators leading up to the roof of the tower. While they were in the elevator, Officer McCoy asked the elevator operator if there was any way they could get above the clock in the tower so they could fire down on whoever was shooting here from the observation deck. But the plan changed once the elevator doors opened. We were instantly, you know, on guard with the guns drawn, and Houston was the only person that had a shotgun. And I was off safety. He was caught back, and uh, a big old grin came on his face. And I know one came on mine because my jaw still hurts to this day. You remember that? Oh, well, hell yeah, I remember it. After that heart-stopping reunion, the officers quickly discovered more dead, wounded, and dying people. Charles Whitman's first victims that day. Half the group stayed to evacuate. A young man here, there was a woman here, and then a, a boy laying on top of her, and the woman asked me to get everyone who's on top of her off of her. Because, you know, she was very uncomfortable. Officers McCoy and Day continued upstairs where Officer Martinez and University Co-op Manager Alan Crum were waiting. At the exits to the observation deck, they peered out the windows looking for signs of any shooters. As they went out onto the deck, they could see parts of Whitman's arsenal and food supplies, but no sign of him. Martinez, right here. Martinez, right here. Was he squatted down? Oh, hell yeah. And I was pretty... <laughs> because lots of shots were still being fired from the ground. Mm -hmm. At about that time, Officer Day and Alan Crum were on the other side of the tower, making their way around to where the sniper had to be. We walked through here. Crum was behind me about three or four paces. And I was I just walking through here, and uh, there was fire overhead. You could tell. You can see where they... The big ships? Yeah, look here. Now, see, that's what we were in danger of. I'd lost track of McCoy and them. I didn't realize they'd already gone out while we were moving the wounded uh, down. And so when we were coming back up, and that's when we heard all the shooting, mm -hmm. we didn't know where it was coming from. You could tell the shot was close by, and as far as we knew, this one or more snipers was, was shooting at us. It's a battle now. It's a battle between the sniper and the police. As the wounded were taken down in elevators, Officers McCoy and Martinez were still inching around the observation deck, looking for the sniper. He went into here, split position, left leg sticking that away, right leg sticking back that away. And he started firing, tow, 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 tow. I come back up over here, right there, well, I'm down, low. Shot in the head, I hit him, and the head started going that away. And I didn't like that shot, stood up straighter. The shot again and hit him over here. His head bounced and then he just kind of slid, slithered down like that. Got my shotgun and jacked in that third shell looking up there above me. Martinez threw his pistol down on the floor and then he uh, grabbed at my shotgun. I started not to let him have it. I let him have it because he had no weapon. I drew my 38. Martinez started hollering like a banshee, hollering, hollering. All the way down there and ran to that body down there. Martin stood over the body and shot like that, shot him. Then Martin ran back this way a little ways, threw my shotgun down and jumped up. I got him, I got him, I got him. I holstered and ran to Martinez, pulled him down. Police got to the time. Heard Whitman's radio uh, talking. And I told Martinez, go tell Jerry Day to call the Austin Police Department and tell them it's over. The sniper is dead. Charles Whitman's hours of terror were over. Police reports on the rampage would be filed. Uh -oh. Can you see over me Houston photo? Oh, oh yeah, Jerry. <laughs> but these officers say they never really talked about what had happened at the top of the tower again until this reunion. And that's the truth. This dark day in Austin's history is now 40 years old, and the officers say there's still no real memorial to mark what happened and remember those linked to it. I heard Houston say there was probably a thousand heroes that day. If one man was a hero, there's a thousand of them.